Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. This is Alex and in this video I wanted to show you one of the big changes that I've made in the vertical grow tent. So this is the Black Orchid Hydrobox grow tent. And as you may remember before, it did have that pinky kind of purpley light that I wasn't able to film under because it kept flickering. And as you can see, that has now been replaced with like a nice clean white. The colour on the screen looks a little, little bit warmer than it is in real life. I'd say it's more a cooler colour, but I didn't set the white balance before I started filming the video. So you'll have to take my word for it. So why is that changed? And essentially, it's because of this. So I've been sent a new grow light to test out. And this is by a company in Ireland called Migro. And this is their Migro 100 which I'm calling a TIE Fighter grow light because it looks very similar to the ones from Star Wars. A little bit nerdy, but there you go. So as you can see, it's completely passively cooled. There's no fan. Um, I do have a little fan up there just to uh, blow air over the tops of the heat sink to take, carry the, uh, the heat away. But other than that, it's a completely self-contained unit. So it works because it has a large cob in the center which is like a square uh, circuit board with lots of leds on and it's um, called a chip on board led and the great thing about these is that they're incredibly highly efficient and it's also got this glass um, lens over the top of it which really filters out the light so it means i can have a lot of light coming out of it but it's nice and um, it's softened so it's not as harsh there's no hot spots for the plants so this is my old grow light that I had in here this was the one that had that pinky color and in the center this one actually also had a cob or a chip on board led so that's what that yellow part is in the center but then in comparison to this more modern one this had um, different leds for different spectrums so it had red, red LEDs, um, infrared, deep red, um, UV, all sorts of other kind of supplementary LEDs. Whereas this one just pumps everything out of that one LED. Now the great thing about this fixture, and the reason it's probably one of the best ones on the market at this moment in time, is the efficiency. So you'll hear quite a lot that LEDs are very efficient and they can produce a lot of light for how many watts of energy you put into it. So I know a lot of you out there will be using fluorescent T5 fixtures, and I don't have one to hand, but one of the most efficient ones on the market produces something called um, 0.7 power per watt. So what that means is when you see light, there's only specific wavelengths that can be actually used by the light for photosynthesis and they are between 400 and 700 nanometers so what that means is from like a bluey color all the way up to a red and with the green in between that and so they're the only like useful frequencies to the plant so some fixtures out there may have a very high lux or lumen value but that's not particularly important to the plants, that's just a perceived brightness to our eyes. Whereas PAR is the radiation that's actually useful to the plant. And so you heard me say 0.7 PAR per watt. So that means for every watt you put in, you'd get 0.7 PAR out. Now, cheap LEDs, or like most of your kind of purpley red ones, have a par per watt of around one. So obviously a little bit better than the T5 fixture. But then if we move up to a fixture like this, this has a par per watt of two. So that's almost three times the efficiency of a T5 light and double the efficiency of your average LED kind of Chinese made grow light that has the red and, and blue. So that would mean if I had two of these that were the same wattage as the Migro consumes, they would put out around about the same amount of useful radiation to the plants. 
So you can imagine over time how that would add up. So um, I could run this at, say, a third of the power of a T5, um, and I would still be getting the same amount of light. And in fact, I'd probably be getting more light because the great thing about LED is it's directional and it fires the light straight down. Whereas with a T5, you have to have that reflector up the top to try and bounce the light back down, and that in itself reduces the efficiency. So there's an, a, another two really cool things about this light, and one of them is that it's essentially completely waterproof, apart from the plug. So you could submerge this underwater, essentially, and it would be fine. Um, all the cables are waterproof as well. And the other thing is it's, it's dimmable. So I could run this from anywhere from 10 watts up to around 107 watts at its maximum. So I've gone into a very dark corner of the room where I've got the LED driver and this is essentially what turns those LEDs on and off at the right frequency and this is where you can control the dimming so you can see well, you see the little dot there so there's no markers on it as to what the wattage is I've got a power consumption meter which I've um, set it by but if I turn it all the way down to the left I'm down at around 10 watts where it is at the moment is at around 50 and then all the way up to around here is about 107 so just like with the other fixture I'm running this for 12 hours a day with a smart plug to get the power on and off um, and the fans on and off at specific times and another thing that I wanted to show you was how I've got it hanging. So as you can see here, I've got three ratchets and you, I'm sure you'll be thinking that's overkill. And it is, because you only really need one. But I've got two that have got the slack, at the, um, have got the strain at the moment. This one's completely loose, essentially. And that just steadies it so it's not turning left and right if I knock the grow tent at all or when I'm opening it up. The reason for the one in the centre is that you, ha you have to have this light at a fixed distance above the plants, so around 30 centimetres, and that's what these two are set to. But that doesn't really leave me much space, say if I wanted to get in here, say when the light's off with a little torch and have a good look around. So I've added this central one so I can take the strain off these two with the centre one, pull it all the way up to the top, and then when I've had a good look and I want to lower it back down again, I take the strain off that one, these two pick it back up again, and they're at the exact right height of 30 centimetres. So just a little bit of a, an easier way rather than having to set that height all the time when, whenever you mess with it. One other thing I didn't mention are these little screws here. So if you undo them, it allows you to turn the black part uh, to focus the light in a specific direction if you've got plants not directly underneath. So I think that's everything for this video. Um, I really hope you've enjoyed this overview of the light and it's given you something to think about in terms of, well, I guess it's just demonstrated what LED technology has got to in terms of performance and efficiency. And um, I look forward to hopefully seeing you in a future video. And if you look out for my Instagram and Google Photos page, um, you'll get photos of these every now and again just to show you how they're getting on and... Um, how colourful they're getting under the light. So like I say, I'm only running this currently at 50 watts um, because it is winter and I don't really want them growing with any kind of um, intensity. I don't want them thinking it's summer because then I'll be having to water a lot and I don't really want to do that. So thank you very much for watching the video. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. If you want to check this light out, um, it is quite an expensive unit. So this is uh, 250 pounds for the 100 watt version but like I say if, if you have lights over a long period of time this will easily pay for itself back in electricity costs so it's something to uh, to consider if you want to work out how much you're currently paying and how much difference it would make if you installed one of these um, I'll show you the little calculation for that now so this is the calculation and I'll just run through it with you quickly. So what we want to do first is to work out the kilowatts. So this light 
is 100 watts, so that's 0 0.1 of a kilowatt. So that's that value there. And then how many hours are you running it per month? So if you're running it for 12 hours per day, over 30 days, that's around 360 hours, I think. And then the electricity cost, so depending on where you are, what your currency is, uh, that will change obviously, but in my area it's around 15 pence per kilowatt. Uh, it's much cheaper in America. So what we do there is we want it in pounds or you want it in dollars. So it would be 0 0.15 pounds. Or if you were doing it in cents, it would be 0 0.12. Say it was 12 cents per kilowatt hour, you would, uh, it would be 0 0.12 of a dollar. And then you times all this together and you would get a value of, uh, of the cost over a month. So 0 0.1 times 360 is 36 and then times 0 0.15 would be five pounds per month. So if we times that by a year, it would be sixty pounds a month. Um, sorry, sixty pounds a year. So if you can imagine, if you were running a similar powered um, or similar light outputting T5 fixture, you'd be paying one hundred and eighty pounds a year, as opposed to the sixty. Um, anyway, you can do the maths for your own kind of setup, but it does add up over the years, and this would easily start to pay for itself again. Uh, I really hope you've enjoyed the video and it's given you lots to think about and I'll see you in the next video.